Hey Chicago, what do you say? It's the CHGO Cubs pregame show presented by Factor Meal Kits. Use the code CHGO Cubs50 to get 50% off your first Factor box and free wellness shots for life with any active subscription at factormeals.com slash CHGO Cubs50. Happy home opener, Cody Del Mendo. The Cubs coming home with their first win of the season. They take the finale against the Rangers. So one and two coming home. Brewers and Pirates off to a combined 7-0 and start. Woof. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And here comes Shota Imanaga for the home opener. Along with the rain. Shouldn't have mentioned it. But we're holding out hope, right? We're holding out hope. How do you feel after the first weekend of baseball? I'm cautiously optimistic. That's what I said yesterday when I joined Corey and Brennan on their uh, weekly show. Um Listen, like we knew, we knew the team's flawed. It has issues. They have a lot of questions. I thought there was a lot of good, while there were also a lot of bad this weekend, right? Like the issues at third base, um, you know, the questions about the starting pitching, and now it's even more under a microscope because Steele is hurt, right? Um, I will say, I thought Jordan Wicks was great yesterday. I I think the defense let him down, um, but you know, obviously third base a big talking point with the Cubs right now. Um, but I mean, also just the the defense in general. Like Dansby Swanson can't have that 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 air. He just can't. He's too good. He's too talented. He's paid too much damn money to have that air. And Saya, I'm sorry, man. It is way too damn early to give me PTSD uh, on day three of the season. Okay, <laughs> I can't. I, I can't take that again. All right. So, um, like I think Brennan said it before I joined their show yesterday. Like clean it up. Like this team's better than what we've seen the last three days. You were lucky to to pull out the win in 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 the in Texas against the the reigning World Series champions. Um, I'm not I'm not pan, I'm not in panic mode or anything like that. But obviously, yeah, there's some things they need to clean up on that they themselves can actually do. Like Swanson, not you know committing yeah. an error. He'll and be Saya he'll be, be better, fine though. He'll know? be fine. I just I I felt like the thing that went through my mind is spring training is just so overrated. Oh, Cactus yeah. League baseball is so overrated. Everybody, ha- half of the guys show up not ready. Mm-hmm. It, it's just bad baseball early in the season. A lot of times the weather's bad like it's going to be today or, you know, pitchers just aren't quite ready. Uh, guys are working through nagging injuries early on. I just, a lot of times the first part of the season is a little bit ugly. We'll, we'll talk about the defense um, coming up in just a little bit. Obviously, Ben Brown was part of that, too. Like, he gets his major league debut. The Cubs are down two starters three games into the season. Not even one game into the season. They're down two starters, and it's brutal. I I guess I'm thankful as a Cubs fan that... It's now instead of, like, in August. I guess that it's now and and that it's a month. You know, I I saw the video of um, Steele throwing in in the outfield today. Yeah. I, that doesn't mean anything because it's his hamstring, but it, at least I mean I I thought it was his knee at first. Mm-hmm. At least it's not his knee, but a hamstring for your ace, who Grade we said one, is probably whatever. the most valuable player health wise on the entire team, is an absolute nightmare. So part of the reason is because you have a lot of guys that you're not sure what to expect. Even when Tyone comes back, you're not sure what to expect. And today's starter. Show to Imanaga, while expectations are high, it doesn't mean you you know what you're really going to get because he's making his major league debut. Um, and he was pretty good in spring. Now, again, the scouting report on this guy was in Japan, lots of strikeouts and quite a few home runs too. That's why he was a bit more, people were thinking he may be a uh, middle of the rotation guy, even though he had 174 strikeouts in Japan last year. He also gave up a lot of home runs. Yeah. So uh, he had 25 strikeouts in the Cactus League. We was striking out like six a game. 
Yeah, I think his strikeouts per nine was at a ridiculous level, like 17, Yeah, something like that. Right, so, <laughs> like, you know, he, he did strike out a lot of guys in mm-hmm. the spring, but, of course, that spring. Um, I heard J.D. talking on the radio today, I think it was J.D., talking about how one of the things he may have to adjust to is, first of all, he, he does have the ability to go high heat, and he, wor- he, works, he works vertically, you know, a, a lot of pitchers now are with the sweeper are working left to right across the zone. He's a guy that kind of it, his success comes from working up and down. That's where the strikeouts come from. And he can throw the high heater, mm-hmm. which can be successful. The trick will be like, how high does he have to throw it in Major League Baseball? Because in Japan, the strike zone is actually a little bit lower. So that might be something he has to get used to. I know he early on in spring training was talking about getting used to the pitch clock, something he didn't have uh, to get used to today. One of the most interesting things I saw, and this has nothing to do with actual baseball. He's going to be wearing a patch that says MLB debut on it. And it's part of a thing. I didn't know this happened last year, but apparently it started last year. Major league baseball has kind of a partnership with tops trading cards. Mm. You know, the, the major, Trading cards company tops T O P P S, and so for this game he's going to wear this patch that says MLB debut. After the game, the patch will be removed from the jersey, authenticated by baseball and tops, and then randomly they will stick it in a pack of cards. I believe along with a one of one autographed card by Imanaga after the game. So they're That's trying to cool. they're trying to build up this like, you know, for for the real trading card geeks out there, they're trying to boost up the level of cards again. Cause you can say nobody else in the world has this card. It's autographed by the guy and you get the patch from his jersey. So the rarity. It, it's so mm. it's so rare. It's one. It's one of one. So what is it worth to you? Now other Cubs have done it. Uh Mervis has done it and Amaya has done it. Mm. But considering the international impact that Im- Imanaga may have, I would guess this will be higher than those two would be. Yeah. Right? I mean, PCA also, I'm PCA, assuming? PCA, but I, I just think by drawing in the fan base from Japan, ah, yeah. any fair. fan from Japan that might want to get involved on That's trying fair. to find that or buy it from whoever gets it out of the pack. Anyways, yeah. I thought that was kind of a cool thing. If you're looking at the game today and you're watching, you're like, well, why? why? He's actually got one that says debut. Yeah, they're going to rip that patch off the sleeve. He doesn't get to wear it after that. Anyways. Yeah, no, that's cool. I I think that that's a great way to. I mean, obviously, trading card nerds are a different breed. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, but, and they've changed over the years. Yeah, but at the same time, I think it's a great way of like growing the game too for kids. So yes, uh, live YouTube chat is going. Garrett Johnson says he works nine to five, but he's here for the live. Doesn't get here for it's the live while, shows, but yeah. here during his break. Credit to you, Garrett. Credit to you. Yeah, I I know. I remember seeing him in the chat during the season last year. So. Uh, to see him here now uh, for pregame. First pregame of the season. Yeah, this is it. Uh, you did the first beer bat, by the way. I saw I that on the internet. And, so I, the and I, the and social I don't, medias. I don't yeah. know. I don't know the time the on it. But it wasn't my best one. Did like, I, 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 saw, I, I, I didn't I didn't fully time it, but I saw a pause halfway through a gathering, to, a few cuss words. I mean, I'm just glad there wasn't any sort of there was no, no, no. regurgitation. Yeah, that's no, the no. regurgitation. Definitely gonna take some work. Could have been worse. Was it over was, 30 seconds? I I guessed. I what guessed. was your best yeah. last year? Under nine? It was like get, nine seconds last Nine year. seconds was yeah. the top. So this, we'll you know. It's April. I was able to do the three entire times? video. That's, almost, that's three times? He was 30 <laughs> I seconds. was able to do the entire video in a yeah. minute and, I don't know, 50 seconds. But there was a lot of that. It was just me talking. and Yeah, dedicating it yeah, to dedicating Ian Happ and, and yeah. welcome and I'm back. It was red hot going into not, this game. And yeah. you didn't have a, a patch on your sleeve that said... Beer, beer bat chug debut blue moon no i did not no that would be an interesting not. patch that, yeah, yeah would we be. could ask him if they'd send us <laughs> one maybe uh hey by the way I, I i don't this is a factor show i had a factor meal yesterday well i brought one in uh, Ooh, i got a problem though everybody in the house is eating them everybody likes them oh no the, they're good yeah, here, they're, I, here i thought i had six delivered and i thought well those are six little meals i have all of a sudden everybody in the house is eating them. the kids yeah. are eating them the wife's eating them like yeah. hey everybody you know, for work, I'm supposed to be eating those. All of a sudden, everybody's like, well, these are delicious. I brought one in for lunch today. You did? I, I should have. I should have done that. I didn't bring any lunch in, so. I didn't either. Thoughts and prayers. Yeah. 
Hot dogs? Maybe? I like to fast for a home opener. Uh, home I might, opener. I'm going to get a hot dog. <laughs> yeah, our, our big Easter, we, we had we had a ham, and then sure. afterwards we were kind of, kind of hungry know, again. Hey, break out those factor meals. Yeah. I will say that eating a factor meal with these new Friday 120 shirts. Yeah. Will See be those? Great. That's oh. when you get the new merch now. Oh. New merch. Wow. Then the north side. That's go. coming up this Friday, right? For our first one this Friday. Yeah. <sighs> That's pretty. Uh, yes, we got we got a couple new shirts. That's the Friday 120 Club. Yes. Cody and Braggs, you go hang out. Here, here's what that is. The Friday 120 Club starts this Friday. There are 14 home Fridays at Wrigley Field this year. Yes. Cody's going to go to all of them. Weather permitting, health permitting. Credit to him, by the way. Credit to him. He's oh, getting paid God. to go to 14 games. Big of me. I mean, that's... <laughs> and not that's sit in not the press terrible. box. There's no work to do. That is not terrible. All he has to do is drink Blue Moon, hang out with some people, and uh, watch a baseball okay. game. Okay, there will be work. And the work is, is like, I'm... Me and Braggs, we're going to go... We're going to go talk to people. We're going to we're gonna do a lot of what I did with our social media coordinator, Emma, today, all right? We're okay, gonna, yeah. We're going to be asking only the important questions, okay? And only the trying to get Braggs off your couch in yes. the morning will also be another, you know, <laughs> yes, difficult exactly. task. Uh, so Friday 120, all you have to do is buy yourself a bleacher ticket. Yep. Cody and Braggs already have their bleacher tickets. Then, after you buy your bleacher ticket, you go to the uh, CHGO locker at allchgo.com. You buy this shirt, the Friday 120 Club. Everybody's gonna. Tr- We're trying to get everybody to wear their Friday 120 Club shirt to the game. Bring your bleacher ticket and pregame your meeting at Murphy's before 10 o'clock in the morning. Like 9.30. Like 9.30, yeah. Like 9 30. Like 9:30, Y'all yeah. are wild. Now, I, and I hey, will, I will 9:30, say. 9.30, blue moon. 9.50, yeah. blue moon. Noon, blue moon. Noon, blue moon. <laughs> uh, I will say, you know, with the weather we have this week, it's totally okay if you know you want to put it over your hoodie or or whatever. Yeah, or Dress a thermal, warm. maybe a thermal underneath <laughs> yeah. there. It's all presented That's by what our friends I will at be Circa. Doing. That's what I will be doing. Yeah, uh, hope I'm I'm optimistic that maybe Friday the weather will be nice, just because we're getting like a stretch of bad weather this week. You know, like maybe the the good yeah. day will come on. Another Friday. another brilliant decision by the MLB schedulers. Oh, hey, my camera just went off. Hold on, let's go back to this graphic. Hey, oh, hey, oh, what, what happened? Are hey, what are we hey, doing? What are we doing? Both Chicago teams are playing here right now. What are we it's, doing? It's idiotic. Mm-hmm. It's idiotic. So, yeah, the pregame is at uh, 9.30 in the morning at Murphy's Bleachers. Again, bring your Friday 120 Club shirt. Uh, all presented by our friends at Circa Sports. Then post. Then you're going to sit in the bleachers, hang out with everybody. Hopefully, we get a big enough group that eventually the left field bleachers just become green. With the Friday 120 Club. How sick would that be? You know, I, I'll yeah. tell you one thing. I don't know if he's going to buy one, but we need to get Bleacher Jeff one because we know he's going to take oh, that yeah. corner spot. Oh, yeah. We I already know he's saw gonna... him post a video today. He was like one of the first people there. I, I'm, That's sure right. he, I'm sure he was in the season ticket holder line. And if he's not willing to wear one, then we're going to force him out of that spot. That's the what way about, that's going to uh, <laughs> our, our friend Son Ranto. Danny Rocket. Son Ranto, Danny yeah, Rocket. I'm he'll sure get, he'll one. get one. I'm Danny sure he'll get one. one. He's a big supporter of us and also just Cubs content people, so. Um, yeah, no, I, uh, I'm I do excited have, for Friday. I do have one concern. Nobody getting a fight. Ble- a yeah. bleacher, there's, no fighting ble- in the bleachers. there's no fighting in the bleachers, but 14 games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Sean Caselli of- in the chat. Uh, is this going to be the new bleacher bums? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Cause the bleacher bums, it's, it's an outdated term. Yeah. It's an outdated term. Let's be honest. Okay. We wanted to come up with, our I don't own think the word bums name. is, is. Oh, have we canceled bums? I think I think we've canceled bums. That's probably been canceled only, by somebody. The only bums are uh, playing in uh, St. Louis. And right. Well, they're bums. Yeah. And losers, too. Yeah. One in three uh, to start the season. Hate to see it. Anyways, that's and then afterwards, you're going to go to Almost Home. Almost Home. For the post-game, post-game hangout. They have after party, yeah, if you will. They have darts. They have pool tables. I've had the food there. It's great. They love us. So like, I'm nice. excited. And they're right across. They're diagonally right across the street from our friends at Obvious Shirts. And I have so many people all the time asking me about like where that where they are at. Like, I'll I'll lead you right there. You know, Cody, lead credit you there. to you again. Credit, credit, to, credit me. to you, Cody. Credit to me. Right. Again, he'll take you to two bars and he'll take you to the bleachers. Yeah. And, and what were you guys ever sit in right field? You're saying no, right? no. I'm never. Is Bragg's just only left field too? Yeah. He is Le- now. Left field, left field is where it's at. See, I don't get that. Like, it, I it could care less. Right field, left field, left field view is nice, but right field has that kind of, you know, 
Nice little bar back there. I'll say like the the bar or whatever. That's kind of nice the on the right field booth. side. Yeah, yeah it's isn't nice. That, it's isn't, nice, but it's isn't but the also hot dog like stand you, on the right field. You can. Field side? It's like a. Su- it's technically like a suite though. Like you can't just go there as a regular fan. Right, that know? section. The only thing I don't like about the right field bleachers as much as the left field is when the time of the day is wrong and the sun's coming through. Yeah the third base side, and it's sure. straight into your eyes, whereas if you're in the left field bleachers, it just kind of goes by you a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, uh, today's lineup, Ian Happ, top of the lineup, leading off. Man, he's the, I mean, he's the reason they've got one win. Yeah. You had a For all those day. Happ haters out there. Yeah. I gave us a ton of credit in that video. I said, we at CHO Cubs have been clamoring for Ian Happ to be the leadoff guy for months. I mean, I feel, I, and then I feel like it's not even us. I just feel like a lot of people last year even mm-hmm. were saying, just put him in the leadoff spot. Mm-hmm. Well, right? I, I don't know, man. Like, I I put up that video on CHO Cubs Twitter of me talking about how excited I was that Ian Happ was leading off on opening day. And I got some, there were some people in my mentions. Oh, there's Happ haters out yeah. there. Yeah. Like, they're they're like, no, he's a, he's a seven hitter at best. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so I love it. He also and the biggest thing, not only did he have four hits yesterday, but he walked. He walked, yeah. He gets on base. All he base does is, is get on base. All he does is get on base, man. Game winning RBI. That's what you need out of the leadoff role. Right. So I love I honestly I've like one of the, the pros of the season so far is that I love the lineups that Craig Council's putting together. You're putting your best hitters at the top of the lineup. They're getting the most at bats. Um and and he's so far he's hit it he's hit it perfectly on like when like what games to put certain guys in like Talkman even had a good game yesterday walked a couple times he's in right? the li- he's in the lineup again today playing right field because say is the DH right uh, now mo- do you think that's a council just going kind of like hey nice game you get to play again or do you think it was just part of his I'm curious why he's got say in the DH. I'm not sh- I'm really not sure I would I would love to I'm know what sure. like. Yeah. I mean, I, I do think that Talkman earned another start. That's for sure. Like, I, I don't hate it. You know? I think he's better defensively than Saya. I mean, yeah. I mean, saya has got a good arm. We've seen him, you know, run down. Like, we're not run down, but like improve defensively compared to year one. Obviously, yesterday in right field, he had that. Again, that play that right. gave, that reminded us of what happened against Atlanta last what year. What happened? I don't know what happened yesterday. I will say about yesterday. <laughs> I will say about yesterday is that play was definitely a lot tougher than the play against the Braves. Oh, yeah. I will say that. I will give him yeah. that. But, again, for as good as he is and as improved of a defensive player that he has been since year one, he's got to make that play. All right? Um, and I was also going to point out Amaya had two hits. He's not starting today, but, like, he put right. him, he plugged him in at the right time. He got two hits. Like, I'm, again, I give more of the credit to Amaya because, like, from, I think for Amaya this year, it's kind of a, you know, prove that you belong type mm-hmm. thing, that prove that you can be a, a starting catcher, you know, type situation, uh, especially with Gomes, you know, a year older. I, I'm not expecting the same thing from Jan Gomes la- as we saw from last year. But um, obviously I think Gomes defensively, how he works with the pitchers and stuff is, is still very valuable. But I would love to see Amaya break out this year in a way. I, I know that was one of Ryan's picks of, like, guys who could – take that step forward this year. So um, I thought that that was good. I thought Michael Bush has had good at bats. He should have had a homer too. yesterday. He hit the ball to the farthest part of the ballpark. It would have left Wrigley if it was played here. Uh, baseball savant said like it would have left 10 different ballparks. So I thought he's had good at bats. He's walked almost in, in two of the three games. He's had a good plate approach. I think he's so far has looked really good for the Cubs. Um, obviously, if you just look up the stats right now, he's not. there's not a lot there. But again, it's three games, small sample size. That could easily he could have two hits today, and it could change completely, you know. So, yeah, I, I love this lineup, and I love the way that Craig Council is showing a little bit of consistency. You're seeing the same four guys at the top, and um, you didn't see a lot of that last year. But I think that comes with the fact that this roster is significantly better compared to beginning of last year. Right, when you're just trying to patchwork stuff all the time. Uh, yeah. So yeah, Hap, Suzuki, Bellinger, Morrell. And I know we're going to talk briefly about the bad defense and how long will they go with it. It's, it's to me, it's the storyline of the season. I, it was the storyline so going in. Now maybe having two starting pitchers out after one game <laughs> yeah. could end up becoming now 
the new biggest storyline of the season, but yeah. trying to figure out if he can play third base or not because obviously the bat plays. I know he's going to strike out a lot, and eventually, hopefully, he's able to lay off the slider low and away a little bit more, but a lot of guys struggle with that pitch. Mm-hmm. You watched that first at bat yesterday, and you're just like, man, the guy's got power. Raw Three power. run homer, raw power. Raw power. He's, he's one of the guys... That's, was, I think we all picked him to lead the team in home runs. He was a few feet away from having two homers this mm-hmm. weekend. You know, I thought he was he was great uh, with the bat. He was that great all three night, games. Was that like the extra innings one was yeah that? yeah just, just a few feet a away. Pole. I mean that yeah. would have oh. that would have won, won that that would have won that yeah. game. And yeah. then he leads off you know, the three run jack yesterday. with a three run jack on Sunday. So yeah. so I've I understand the the defense is going to be a rocky ride, but. I'm at third. At third. Not yeah. I don't think the rest of the team it is. I just no. think at third it's yeah. going to be rocky. Right. And you don't have at the moment you don't have Bellinger over there sure-handed Bellinger picking and saving him. Do you think that Bush should have made that made that pick? Uh cuz there were some people that said that he should have made it and I don't agree with that. I, I don't know that I think he needed to make it. I'm just saying he's not Cody Bellinger at first. He's not Rizzo at first. Like those guys used to 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 help out a lot, right? Yeah. So Take him. We took him you know, for granted. We know the corner, the corner mm-hmm. infield. That's a question mark so yeah. far this season. I'm, I'm not expecting him to get great. Uh, Ron Coomer was talking on the radio this morning about different things he can do. And when he was, he, you know, he was a third baseman. He, I believe, even in high school, and he was saying that Tom Kelly in, when he was in Minnesota, said, "Just get an out. Just get one out. Don't, don't be worried about what you know." Can I turn this, you know, turn this to two, make this spectacular play, catch the ball, throw the ball. Just take keep it as simple as that. And he believes that part of the adjustment for Morell at third base that makes it a little bit different is the depth you have to you have to find the right depth for you at third base. He said, because you know, he gets a ground ball yesterday and he goes straight to his left and he takes it at a mid hop flying by and he's like that that's you know that's a that's a really hard play that's like trying to take a stab at a golf ball going by you he's like but if he would have cut an angle on that if he would have been playing it at at a different depth and known I just take one step in and cut it off and go over he goes he gets it on the short hop and it's a much easier play it's just the repetition of doing that and that that, gotta get to a point where he's not thinking on those throws right like it feels like he's thinking Oh, I, the throws! I think yeah, he definitely does. He, sure. These are he's but he's like either when, not thinking and he's just kind of loafing it over there, or he's overthinking. Well, I feel like the tough plays have been easy for him because he doesn't have time, time to, to do it. He yeah. just has to do it, right? Um, yeah, man, I I get it. I get the frustration from the fan base. I just you, I I'll, I'll agree with Godfather on this because he says in the chat, Morel at third, no closer. I'm worried. I'll agree with him on one on one part of that in terms of Morell at third of, you know, and, and this goes with him and how, you know, the Cubs didn't do anything to shore up third base in this off season, but it's also like, and, and I'm going to keep saying this, like, did you want them to sign a Matt Chapman and block Matt Shaw? Like I didn't, I would have been okay if they did. And it would have pushed Matt Shaw back at least one more year, or at least you, I don't know where you would have played him. You could have found I mean, I a way to play him, I, but I like, could have I could have played him at third and traded him at some point. Like well, you don't yeah, have to have you, the guy for the sure. duration of the deal. However, I don't think the I like I like the idea of finding out can Morell do this. And yeah. I don't know if you give him a half a season because I don't know how many games you can afford to uh yeah. to lose because of it. Um and by the way, Godfather, welcome back. Yeah. Glad you're doing all right. He was right. in yesterday's chat, so I'm glad he's, to see he's, that he's, he's back. Better. He had the, yeah. the heart surgery. Hopefully, yeah. went well, and hopefully, you're right. feeling well. And I, I guess again, the thing is for me, it's it's as much as you know, I I have the expectation of you know making the playoffs, winning 89 games. You said 90 on the season preview show. Like as much as that's the thing for yeah, for us, what kind of Kool Aid was I drinking? <laughs> it's been three games, okay. Um, the thing is, I didn't is, know Steele was going to get hurt. As the, soon as Steele got hurt, I wanted to cut the number back down. The thing is, is that this is also a season where the Cubs are supposed to finally play some of their high end prospects. That's yeah, true. You know, like well, Ben Brown's for, up for years. 
for years b- before, even before, uh, you know, Rizzo, Bryant and Baez were traded, like at the end of their tenure, people were talking about how the farm system have anything, how there was no guys coming up and all these other guys and other teams are coming up. And it's like, all right, well, the Cubs are at a point now where they have that. I know that we want them to, you know, invest more money into the, into the roster. And I believe me, I'm with you. Like I want that. But when it comes to this position, you got a guy like Matt Shaw, who is skyrocketed through the minors last year in half a year. Why, why can't he be on the, like the many people believe that he could be on the roster mid season. And like, if that's, if that's the case, then I'm willing to ride it with Morel, Masterboni, and Madrigal for a few months and wait and see. You know what I mean? Like, if they had signed Chapman, again, I would have been fine with it because it would have been a sure thing. But at the same time, you have to consider the fact that you're also blocking one of your top prospects. So, And you're spending more money. Like, I don't care I, about the spending the money we don't, part. But. We don't care, but Jed and Tom care. Yeah. So that's, you know, he, Jed was asked today, are you disappointed you didn't, go get more pitching. He's like, well, you always want more pitching. He's like, but there's a reality of eventually you realize whether it's budget wise or player wise that that's not realistic right now. So, and I, okay. And I said this on yesterday's show too. Like if they played Morel just DH every single day, that also affects potential other potential prospects. Mm -hmm. Like I expect, I, I said, whenever Canario got, option to triple a i said i give it 45 days of him in triple a if they call up canario well if if they call him up first off they'll call him up because they want to give him every day at bats and i don't want it to be because of an injury right so no, yeah you don't want ben brown up here the way he's up here right, right. now but now that he's here so the thing is is like if they called up canario and you're not playing morel at third at third base there's nowhere to play him right you know at least every day and it's the same morel's got to be in the lineup and then yeah. he has to be the dh right and same thing for Owen Casey, who I think is a little bit later down the road, even though he's off to a hot start in triple a, that's just kind of how I feel how it's going to be no matter what, like you have this, it's better to go through these lumps now with Morel than it is to just DH him and then have all these, these guys blocked. Like that, and that's the big, like that, I, that's why I said at the end of last season that they needed to figure this thing out with Morel because if if they didn't, then it's like okay, then who are you trading because you're blocking guys, right? And then they didn't trade anyone, you know. So that's where it's at. Daniel says D back Scott Montgomery on the cheap. You can't tell me the Cubs couldn't have made the same deal. They could have. They didn't want to. Yeah, but that's that's what I'm saying. They don't want to go any further over that luxury tax. They feel like mm-hmm. they're going to go over it anyway, but they'd like to hold off now. It appears until the trade deadline, and then they it's, can decide if this team really is worth investing. That they're not they're, and, and hitting that mark. Right. They're right? not convinced that they're. They're you not know, convinced this is a World Series yeah. team, and I don't dis- I don't yeah. disagree with that statement. The, but the pushback to that is like, you a you're the Cubs, yes, and B, I know, and B like you gotta you gotta get to the deadline with a good team to even invest. I'm, I'm with you. Like I, <laughs> so, I would worry about it later, but yeah. what they're thinking ahead to is. If you do it this year, then the next year it's 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 way more mm-hmm. trouble going into that tier, and then well, then that, you're in all kinds of trouble. Right. So, like, I get it. I yeah. understand there's there's real life questions, but for sure, we'll we'll deal with that one. Let's get to who you got, right? Because that's <laughs> we have real, so. But we're going to talk about this some more on post game. I mean, I'm we sure. have an hour long post game, yeah. guys. Like, yeah. Yeah, after I'm not doing Randall A Theater, but we could do Randall. Oh theater no, no, we're not doing Randall. <laughs> Why would you even say that? I'm just kidding. Cody will be in the Discord, baby. I don't know. Yeah, that's oh, perfect. I'm Discord gonna drag theater. Luke in there. Right now, that's a good idea. A little uh, rain delay Discord theater. You know what? Uh, when come can Sarah home. come back? <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't say mean things like that. Uh, who you got? Very important. Uh, game one. Corey walked away with the win by taking Morell, mm-hmm. and I said he almost won the game, but he didn't. So he almost lost it. But Corey is one and zero. The rest of us own one. Are we uh, not counting the weekend? Did you guys make picks over the weekend? I kind I mean, I <laughs> it, made it. It was Holy Week. I, I don't make picks on okay. Holy Week. I don't know. I, you know, okay. I didn't make any selections. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm going Morell. Yeah. I'm going Morell. Okay. Um, I'm going Michael Bush. Uh, he I likes think. Bush. I'm going with Morell. Uh, Ryan <laughs> is going Hap, staying with the hot yep. hand. And we'll say has been pretty good, too. 
Yeah. So you had the big hit yesterday to give them the insurance runs for Adbert. So and I like all four of them, all four of them, I think have been very good to start the year. So. We're going to let law make the decision here. Now, Brendan wait, wait, from I, his other job chimed decide. in before the start of the show. Yeah, I just sort of at twelve forty-five had it. He wanted Nico. He he threw that in Slack, but he threw it in Slack over after what should have been the real start time of the show. It's your call. I don't uh, care if you yeah. want. If you also, want to, also I had already made the graphic, so he could. Um, he doesn't get it. Sorry, Brendan. It was after the graphic. Yeah. Uh, you're not included in the fun we, today. Uh, we also, do have a I'm, super chat. I'm we upset do have that a he's chat, yeah. he lives in California and he's nice there. It is nice. It's too nice there. Chris Pagero. Chris Pagero. What did Chris say? Uh, he says, I don't know how this is going to sit, Uh-oh. but if Morell works at third and Shaw rakes and Nico doesn't take a step, do you trade Nico and play Shaw at second? Does he not have a no trade clause? No, they could trade him because all they did was basically it's buy out. Ha- as the far as I know, it's years. Hap and Suzuki that yeah. have the no yeah. trade clause. I, I mean, I'm a believer in what? Collect good, good players. Good collect good collect players. Good players. Yeah. And I know that some become Nico chess would, pieces, yada, yada, yada. Nico's yeah. not a guy, unless unless I was getting something of great, great value, yeah. even though he's not a home run guy, yeah. Nico wouldn't be a guy that I move, necessarily. Yeah. That, that wouldn't be my guy. I know You're, he's, Christian, don't worry. Nico looked rough. It's been three games. He His last two at-bats yesterday I thought were a lot better. But, yeah, I agree. It's been three days. Carlos, so. this is live. Um, it's about to not be live because we're almost done. I guess for me, yeah, it's... Let's get out of here. For me, baseball. for me, Nico, it, you'd have you'd have to get something like if it's a high end pitching pitcher or something like that. Maybe mm-hmm. it's a massive maybe. maybe. Like, oh, what's the at the end of the day, Shaw still hasn't proved a thing yet. Who, so. Who's who, I want, want me to think of the best third baseman in baseball? Cleveland. You always see oh Ramirez. Ramirez. If if you were able to get Ramirez somehow, Shaw could go. Yeah, that's how I feel. Like yeah. I'm happy to have the great yeah. third baseman that's young. But if you're going to give me the best third baseman in baseball, different story. Yeah. By the way, uh, game's about to start. We're back here for an hour post game show. New shirts. I already all chgo.com. Oh. Cody's already folded. Hold it. It. I'm you not get unfolding. It. Come on. You, Look at wow. Wow. What a professional yes. job that is. Can you, you come over and gap? fold all my clothes? This is. They just sit in a basket this is now. All thanks to dating a girl who worked in retail, she taught me how to fold. That that might be the most impressive thing I've ever seen Cody do. <laughs> wow. And uh, right to me. speaking of impressive, <laughs> did you guys see uh, this uh, in the line in, when they were announcing? Today, the Luke the, the Little lineups, standing Luke next little. to Nick Magical. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> you know what that looks like? That looks a like joke? Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito and twins. There you go. That's what it totally what it looks no. like. Oh, if Can we make that do, graphic? If you want to go baseball, no, it's, I mean, it's, if I you want to go baseball. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If you want to go baseball, it's like Altuve standing next yes. to Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge, yeah. 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 <laughs> wow. That's yeah. funny. They did that on purpose, didn't they? Or is it did. Sure. Totally did. No, it's alphabetical. Shout out to Luke Little's dad. Great dude. I don't know. Anyways. Uh, any, right. Very funny. See you after the game. Thanks for checking out the pregame show. Game's about to start. We're going to go watch it. Uh, we're back for a full hour after the game. Please join us. We'll be here live on the YouTube. Until then, fly the W. Y'all silly like the mayor.